Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ella, and as some of you may know, I recently switched over to the iPhone 13 Pro, but before this, I was using the Samsung Galaxy S21 for nine months as my main phone. But during that time, I also played around with some other Android phones, such as the Pixel 6 Pro. So in this video, I will be letting you guys know all of my thoughts about switching to iPhone, my experience. There are definitely some great Android features that I miss, but iOS certainly came with its own pretty cool benefits as well. But before we get into the video, I want to tell you guys about Casetify, the sponsor of this portion of the video. All of Casetify's cases come in 100% recycled packaging made with recycled paper and non-toxic soy ink. Their new impact and ultra impact cases are made of 65% recycled and plant-based materials. They are also 100% non-toxic and non-hazardous. Casetify's cases also feature Defensify, an antimicrobial coating that kills 99% of bacteria by preventing the growth of microbes and preventing bacteria from sticking to the surface in the first place. Casetify carries the largest variety of phone case colors and designs to fit any mood that you're in, and you can choose from their selection of curated prints or personalize a case with your favorite font and design layout for a truly custom case. All right, and now I'm going to purposely drop my new iPhone because Casetify's impact and ultra impact case cases are lined with Qi Tech 2.0 technology on the inside, which is a shock absorbing material that protects all four corners and is now made with recycled and plant-based materials as well. And the Ultra Impact cases have four extra corners of Qi Tech 2.0 shock absorbing protection. So the Impact cases offer 6.6 .6 feet drop protection and the Ultra Impact cases offer 9.8 feet. And as you can see, my phone and the case are both still completely fine. These cases also support wireless charging, 5G, and most importantly, they are built with magnets for strong MagSafe compatibility. Case device cases can definitely be a great gift for your friends, family, or for yourself for the holiday season. And you can go to casetify.com slash created by Ella to save 15% off your order. Thanks Casetify for sponsoring and let's get back to the video. All right, so what surprised me at first was how the iPhone navigates. And I realized that you have to strictly obey the app design. So for example, on the Android YouTube app, if you want to put the video into the mini player at the bottom, then you can drag the video itself down or you can simply swipe inwards from anywhere on both edges. And this is because Android has these built-in gestures for navigation that is independent of an app's design. Now on the iPhone, the only way to do this is to drag the video down. And similarly, if you want to back out of your search results on the YouTube app, and many other apps too, then on the iPhone, you have to click the little button at the top left or swipe from the left edge towards the right. Whereas on Android, the same thing can again be accomplished with a quick swipe inwards anywhere along the edge. So iPhone navigation is definitely less convenient, especially for one-handed use. But overall, it hasn't bothered me too much since the iPhone 13 Pro is a relatively small phone. I feel like this might be more bothersome on the larger iPhone 13 Pro Max. But speaking of software, since I use a MacBook, which I think are the best laptops currently, and an iPad, there are definitely some unique benefits of using an iPhone. One of my favorite features of the whole Apple ecosystem is AirDrop. I think it's super convenient and fast. Before, I did find a pretty good third-party app called AirDroid that allowed me to wirelessly transfer things between my Android phone and my MacBook, but I did have to open that app every single time I wanted to transfer something and wait for it to load. So it wasn't anywhere near as convenient as AirDrop, and it was a bit slower too. I did a test and for a two gigabyte video, AirDrop took a little over one minute to do the transfer, whereas the third party app took about one minute and 40 seconds. So not a huge difference, but you know, definitely appreciate the extra speed. All right, and another feature that I really like, and this one is a bit newer, is the focus mode and how it can sync across all of my devices. So for example, if I don't want to receive text message notifications, I can switch on a focus mode for that using any one of my devices and then all of my devices will mute message notifications. And another feature that I've come to really appreciate is that calls to my iPhone will actually show up on my MacBook. This is actually super nice for me because now I just feel a lot safer about not missing any important calls. With an iPhone, even if I have it set to silent, the call will actually still ring on my MacBook as long as it's not muted. In addition to calls, text messages on the iPhone can also sync with all of my other Apple devices. And this is not 
not just for iMessage. It can work with texts with non-Apple devices as well. But iOS definitely has some pretty significant downsides too. Since the widgets are not interactive like they are on Android, iOS widgets are just not as useful. Before on an Android phone, I would often scroll through my calendar widget, check off reminders, and go through emails all without having to open any app. But on iOS, I would have to open each of these apps in order to do anything. Also, having Google Assistant replaced with Siri definitely isn't an upgrade. So I use Google Assistant a lot in my life to add things to my grocery list, to control all of my smart home devices, and even to watch videos on my Nest Hub while I cook and eat. And after giving Siri a try, I think for the most part, it can do everything that a Google Assistant can do, except it can only kind of play YouTube videos. And of course, it won't let you skip parts of the video with just voice command. But overall, Siri is actually not bad. However, I still think the Google Assistant ecosystem is better, especially considering how convenient the Google Nest Hub is. It can play videos and music on YouTube all without a subscription. So right now I am still using Google Assistant as my virtual assistant, and I do kind of miss being able to summon it very quickly on my phone. And now onto the more physical aspects. So Android phones come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, but for the most part, they all have USB-C, whereas the iPhone has the lightning port, which transfers data slowly and also doesn't fast charge. But I've actually never even plugged my iPhone in, not even once, and that's because one of the best physical features of the iPhone is MagSafe. I've always been a wireless charger user, and MagSafe just makes it even more convenient. It's quite satisfying snapping this iPhone to the MagSafe stand. The magnet is very strong, so you don't have to worry about it being aligned or slightly bumping the phone, causing charging to stop. And reliability aside, there are some pretty cool MagSafe accessories, if you're into that like stands, battery packs, and even wallets. And in general, iPhones typically have the most amount of accessory options. Samsung flagships usually have a good variety as well, but the same cannot be said about many other kinds of Android phones. All right, and another thing that I noticed when using the iPhone is that it has really good battery life. And despite the relatively average battery capacity, it actually easily outlasts many comparable Android phones. In my experience, both the Pixel 6 Pro and the S21 don't last nearly as long as the iPhone. And also the overall user experience of iOS is just very reliable. I've never had any issues with bugs or the phone not responding or apps constantly crashing. So overall it has been a pretty smooth and good experience. My S21 was also very reliable and I had a great experience with it too, but this is not a guarantee with Android phones. The Pixel 6 Pro, at least the one that I got, has just been a buggy mess that crashes and just stops responding way too often. And even after all of the software updates, even to this day, the Pixel 6 Pro still doesn't work properly for certain apps and is overall just not very reliable. That has definitely made me appreciate the reliability of these two phones more. So although the iPhone's camera doesn't have the most eye-catching features, like a super long zoom range or a very high megapixel count, I found that it consistently delivers good-looking photos with accurate colors in most lighting situations. I've been quite happy with with the quality of the photos, and I also really like the live photo feature. All right, so even though the iPhone's hardware doesn't have any crazy novel features, it basically doesn't have any standout weak points either. There also aren't any weird software issues. Overall, it's very reliable, and it works very well with other Apple devices too. And yeah, so that's my experience switching from Android to iPhone. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. If you have any thoughts, please leave them down below. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and also be sure to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my future videos. And I'll see you guys later after I finish my final exams. So wish me luck. All right, bye guys.